good evening and welcome to a one-off special where we meet the two candidates vying for the position of Secretary General for the Muslim Council of Britain, Ajwa Masur and Zara Muhammad. Now, as many of you will know, the MCB is having its biennial husting event online at 11 a.m. on the 24th of January, where the candidates will give a presentation on their vision as well as take part in a Q&A session. So who can stand for the post of Secretary General? Well, anyone who has been nominated as a delegate by an affiliate. The candidates are elected for a two-year term, and an individual can hold these positions for two consecutive terms. Now, all matters relating to voting choices and counts are confidential to the election commissioner and the MCB office. Tonight, we're delighted to say we have the two candidates with us, as well as four guests, each with their own questions. So let me introduce the two candidates with a short film. The Muslim Council of Britain, MCB, is the UK's largest and most diverse national Muslim umbrella organization with over 500 members. Its mission is to empower Muslim communities to achieve a just, cohesive and successful British society. Every two years, the MCB hosts a hustings event when two candidates, standing for Secretary General of the MCB, make short presentations of their vision, as well as participating in a Q&A session. This year's event takes place online on the 24th of January at 11am. Vying for this important role is Ajmal Masroor and Zara Mohammed. Ajmal is an Iman, teacher, broadcaster, counsellor and grassroots activist. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Ajwal Masroor and I'm standing to become the Secretary General of the Muslim Council of Britain, inshallah. Brothers and sisters, if I'm elected, I'd like to bring together communities from all across our country, increase the membership of the Muslim Council of Britain, make Muslim Council of Britain more sustainable, engage with everybody, Muslims, non-Muslims, government organizations, media, most importantly, become the most important and powerful representative body of the Muslims in this country. Brothers and sisters, let's do it together, inshallah. Second candidate is Zara Mohammed, a training and development consultant with a master's in human rights law. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Zara Mohammed, and I am running to be the next Secretary General of the Muslim Council of Britain with my already proven track record of leading and growing Muslim organizations, as well as my work within the current MCB leadership team today, I have the necessary skills, experience and resilience to steer our communities through these uncertain times. What we need is a diverse and inclusive organization, as well as a clear vision of how to meet the challenges of our time, as well as those to come in the future. I'm confident in my ability to do just that, inshallah. Tonight we asked the candidates what issues they would address in office. How would they tackle the challenges of our community today? And why are they best placed to inspire Britain's Muslims for the next two years? Well, there you have it. Um, Islam Channel are delighted to be hosting these hustings here live on Islam Channel tonight. Uh, we're very proud of our, our long uh, partnership with the MCB as well. Uh, so we'd like to ask the candidates questions. Now, Ajmal and Zara, can you hear me? Yes. Welcome. Welcome, Salam. Okay, uh, first question to Zara. Now, Zara, you, I believe, at the moment uh, work within the MCB at the moment, as I believe, um, as the Assistant um, Secretary General. Is that correct? That's right. So, tell me, um, how well? I mean, how well do you feel you know the MCB? And, and maybe, can you tell me about two initiatives or projects since '97? Uh, that you feel, I suppose, most impressed by or have stood out the most for you? Yeah, absolutely. So I've been involved in the MCB, elected now as the Assistant Secretary General for two and a half years. And I think what a time to be involved. Um, there's such an unprecedented situation that we've had to deal with as a leadership team. So it's been something quite important. I would say that the first thing I've seen, or the most important thing, is our response to this pandemic. MCB has been able to facilitate such a united uh, and collective effort from across the community, across different sectors. I think never before have we seen such an amazing and vibrant show of unity, and that is what MCB is all about, bringing together our affiliates and our members and making a real difference on the ground. And I think second to that is the legacy that has been left by 
all of the former secretary generals or the former committees and every single person who's been involved to make sure that this has continued to be an inclusive and diverse organisation that represents so many different parts of our society. So for me, I think what MCB really stands for is what's inspired me to be part of it. And I think the hard work and the sacrifice that everybody's put in is what makes it the organisation that it is today. Thank you so much, Zara. Um, Ajmal, question for you. Now, you're very active, mashallah, within the community and have been for many years. Now, the role of, um, I suppose, the Secretary General of the MCB is one which isn't for the faint-hearted. Now, first and foremost, why are you standing for this role? I think if anyone knows that I don't have a faint heart, I think you should know that. I've been involved at the forefront of our campaigns and activities, alhamdulillah, from uh, early 80s. I have been involved with the MCB, Muslim Council of Britain, from the day it was founded. I still remember the first amazing launch event in Brent Town Hall, where the great and the good gathered. I still remember Yusuf Islam and many others. I still remember the MCB's logo, the sea falling off, and I had to run back uh, to the backstage and putting it up. I was one of the first ones to arrive and one of the last ones to leave. I remember mm -hmm. speaking to one of our great brother called Jamil Sharif the other day, and he said, I still remember how we were sweeping the hall after everyone had left to clean up and uh, make sure our starting was an amazing starting. And it was, Sajid, it was just an amazing starting. I've been involved with MCB's uh, uh, projects in various capacities. I was uh, one of the early in charges of the youth. I did a lot of community engagement work. I did a lot of active fundraising. I've done a lot of media work for the MCB. And most importantly, throughout the campaigns that we have, national campaigns, so the crisis that we have after 9-11, after July the 7th bombing, Lee Rigby murder, terrorism, extremism, government this, government that, I have been involved at the forefront with MCB and working together robustly and strongly presenting the case of Islam, the Muslims, and alhamdulillah, by the grace of Allah, we have done an amazing job. And you know what? MCB has done an, has a brilliant job. And the, the last three, four years, I've been very involved with okay. running ISB, Islamic Society of Britain. Uh, I was I the chair of it. So okay. in any way, I've been doing as much as I could. Brilliant. I will know that. That's great. Well, I'd like to make sure that for the candidates, make sure you please do keep uh, your responses as, as succinct as possible, because there's a lot to get through tonight. Exactly like for that, Ajmal. Um, OK, so a question I have then. So this is, again, a, a very uh, prominent role uh, with an organisation that's worked within the community since its inception in 1997. Now, during that time, the organisation has gone through a period of being effective. And then I suppose, you know, some may say perhaps lost its way in some way, shape or form. And it's kind of making its comeback now to be, again, a voice for the community. So a question I have for you, Zara, and a question for both of you, is how do you feel you can make the MCB more effective and more representative of the diverse views of the Muslim community? No, thank you for that question. And I think that's a question we get a lot about. What is the MCB doing? What is the value that you add? And how are you going to do better? And I think we have to take stock of the work that we have been doing through this pandemic. And truly, it's been so transformational in how we have brought and engaged um, so widely with different parts of our community and beyond. And for me, I think what's really important is how do we engage better? And for our affiliates, the, the beauty of MCB is the strength that we provide with our network. So in, in continuing to actively listen to our affiliates and to respond, as well as capacity building and showing our affiliates that they have an important role to play in the decision making in our organization, because we as a membership organization are only as strong as our affiliates. So one thing that is a really important is to strengthen that engagement is through listening. It's through actually delivering on the ground, which we have been doing, and to continue to build on the foundations of that work because I think it's important to recognise the efforts that we have been doing but also to say there are so many more affiliates to engage with and we're ready to do that engagement now. Thank you Zara. Um, same question to you Ajmal. Alhamdulillah MCB has done a brilliant job. It can do a lot better of course we can all do a lot better. Um, most importantly our affiliates, our membership. I believe membership needs to be uh, doubled if not within the first two years, quadrupled currently and it has been um, 500, that's been the official figure as the MCB affiliate numbers for the last five to 10 years. Mm -hmm. I would like to see that double. I'd like to go and uh, reach a, a, as many organizations grassroots as possible. And alhamdulillah, being an imam, I have a, a great access to 
the uh, most sections of our community, from the pulpit of the mosques to community organizations, to having a fantastic relationship. And I've also been very honored that I've been presenting programs on Islam Channel and being appear and appearing on various uh, mainstream TV programs, etc. So my my face and my contribution is very well known within the community. But just like Zara said, MCB is a listening organization. It's a, an organization empowering people. It's about offering people a chance to voice their concerns. It's about organizing people together. It's about lobbying on, on behalf of the community, representing the community, defending the community, really being the champion for the community. And I believe I can do that with a good team, with an elected body of people, making MCB more diverse, more grassroots, and multicultural for the way Britain today is. So let's go back to uh, both of you as individuals and the work that you've been doing within the community. So uh, I suppose a question I have is, individually, outside of any work that you've done with the MCB, a uh, question for Zara, how do you currently interact with the community? What do you do on a kind of a day-to-day, -day, maybe a month-to-month -month basis in order to kind of, I suppose, um, uh, solidify the community and kind of build relationships and kind of... Uh, I suppose, keep us together. What, what sort of things are you doing? Well, I don't know if you picked it up already, Sajid, but I am Scottish. Um, I'm not sure if the accent's coming through yet. <laughs> it was a bit of a giveaway, yes. Was it a bit of a giveaway? <laughs> so my other hat is um, the Head of Media and Communications for the Muslim Council of Scotland. And as a very big country, that in itself allows me to work with the grassroots here, whether at a local level or at a regional level. And what's really brilliant about that work is I am representing daily, and from a media and commerce point of view, our mosques um, and the work that's happening locally here. Mm -hmm. We're also listening, not just to the mosques, but to the people affected. And we've seen this, just the burial and bereavement part of COVID-19, listening to the fact that you know our communities were suffering and they couldn't grieve properly, and we worked to put on webinars, to engage, to offer services and to connect in our mosques and um, our communities and say, you know, what more can we do? How can we support? So at a local level, I've been very actively okay. engaged in supporting. Wonderful. Um, Thank you, Zara. Exactly. Okay. Um, uh, Ajmal, same question for you as well. What have I been doing for the last 25 years? I, I'm well, let, not sure. Through yeah. Each year. But let's maybe if you can summarize it, Ajmal, that'd be wonderful. I'm trying to get along with Sajid. I put, I put people to sleep. Alhamdulillah, from youth work to community work to media work to uh, offering people support from the spiritual perspective, from the mosques, from communities, from being in charge of ISB, from doing television work. I've alhamdulillah have had a very varied um, and a very colourful. A, a, a working experience. Most importantly, lately what I've been doing is I've been lobbying a, a, a great number of people. So I'm very well known for my, for my open letters that I write to the prime ministers, to countries, presidents and people, where I actually address some of the issues. I'm very, um, uh, very much involved in a lot of online media work. But most importantly, I write. I give uh, social uh, services such as counseling to people who are struggling in their marital life. I address teenage problems. Recently, I did a program about why young people are leaving Islam. So I believe everything that I've done for the last 25 years, alhamdulillah, Allah's grace, has been to support and strengthen the Muslim community as well as serve the cause of Islam. Alhamdulillah. Zakhla khair, Ajmal, to the both of you for that. Stay with us because now we have some guest questions. Now, if I can come to Dr. Muhammad Abdubari, who is an educationalist, a parenting consultant and author on issues such as family, identity and civic activism. Now, he has uh, had leading positions in several large voluntary organisations such as Muslim Aid and Citizens UK. His latest book is his own memoir, A Long Jihad, My Quest for the Middle Way. Um, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you, Dr. Abdubari? Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Jazakumullah khair. Raklafik, lovely to have you with us. So, would you kindly ask your questions to both candidates, please? Jazakumullah khair. First of all, first of all, thanks to Islam Channel for organizing this. I begin this question. Uh, I assume you both are fully aware of MCB's nature and culture, as well as its governance, policies, and protocols. Previous Secretary General sometimes had to take difficult decisions that proved crucial for not only MCB, but also for Muslim, Muslims in this country. My question, should you get elected, can you tell us the two most important actions you will take? 
to achieve MCV success? And how will you ensure consensus is reached if there is a disagreement with colleagues, affiliates, or other stakeholders, especially on policy issues? Zakalaka for that, uh, Dr. Aldabari. A question to Ajmal. Thank you very much, Dr. Aldabari. I've known Dr. Aldabari ever since I was a little young man. Um, in my, um, I, even before my teenage years, when I was very active in the Islam and Mosque, Alhamdulillah, when he used to be one of our teachers. May Allah bless him and give him long life. And he has, of course, served Muslim Council of Britain very, very well. Dr. Abdulbari, to answer your question, the two most important things that I think Muslim Council of Britain needs to do, and inshallah, I'll try and do my best with, would be to increase our membership. In other words, we need to become diverse. We need to become more inclusive, more powerful, more grassroots. That's number one. Number two, I'd be focusing on making MCB more financially sustainable. MCB should not be going around with a begging bowl asking people to donate. We should have already set up our own waqf where people would give money for towards an endowment, a money-making endowment, which is a perfectly legitimate Islamic process of making money and spending money on good cause. So those are the two things I'll be prioritizing. And your second question about how would I create consensus on policy issues, especially if there is a disagreement. Dr. Bari, I will be regurgitating the same teachings that I've heard from you where Allah Azza wa has taught us in the Quran very clearly, when you decide on matters, decide it based on consensus. And when you have consensus decision made, then and then rely on Allah. So it will have to be done on, on the basis of consensus. Democratic means, um, democratic means it has to be in place. We will have to do open and transparent conversations. No behind the doors decision making should be taking place, especially when there are elected bodies and members who need to be part and parcel of the entire process. I will make my governance process transparent. I'll make my decision making process transparent. I'll work along consensus. And where there is very difficult decision to make, of course, we'll have to be consulting our adults, okay. our scholars, so our leaders and our murabbis. Same question to Zara Muhammad. Yeah, as like I'm Dr. Barry, thank you so much for your question. I think for me, the, the really important thing that we have to do is put people first. And I think the culture and development of our organization is the thing that I think is crucial to success because we can do a lot of work, push a lot of projects, but what will happen to the people that deliver? And so for me, I think we need to have a leadership and development culture to start with, where we prioritize our most valuable resource, which is the human beings and all the people that put the work in. Secondly, I think we need to be influential in the policymaking arena. Muslims are some of the most socioeconomic deprived communities. We have barriers when it comes to employment. We have barriers when it comes to achieving the best that we can with all of the wonderful rights that we have here within the UK. And I think the MCB needs to strengthen our voice and really make some noise about changing the policy sector. And the question about you know, consensus and decision making, the MCB already has a wonderful way of achieving consensus, and that is through embracing the diversity of thought that exists. We have a national council, and in all forums, we invite our affiliates to feedback and to share their views with us. And the importance is that not everything, consensus does not mean conformity. It means inviting difference and making a better decision Wonderful. and having that flexibility in our approach. Jazakallah Zara, for that. Uh, I've got some more questions from myself, but before that, we're going to uh, turn to Rashid Hassan who is currently an Assistant Secretary General with the MCB and leading on the MCB's Proudly Muslim and Black Project and a member of the uh, Man UK Old Kent Road Masjid. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Sister Rashida, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. And Assalamu alaikum, and I'm really happy to, to be here. Uh, Wa alaikum salam. So uh, lovely to have to you with us. Questions. I'd like to yeah, uh, you give you the opportunity to just ask a question to uh, Ajmal Sur and Zara Muhammad. Okay, thank you. Um, in recent times, Salam alaikum, brother and sister. Uh, in recent times, the MCD has been working towards tackling the issue of racial discrimination and uh, anti blackness within the Muslim community. Uh, yes, there's been some progress, and uh, many stakeholders and campaigners, however, who believe that there is still a lot to be done. Uh, what would you do uh, when you, if you do get to this position to ensure continuity in what has been done so far and also to come up with effective strategies to tackle this issue? 
That's a great question, Rishi. That stay with us because there is a question I'd like to ask you once we've had the candidates answer that question. Uh, I'd like to go to Zara Muhammad uh, to yeah. answer that firstly. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Rishi. That and Mashallah, thank you for the amazing work you've done for the MCB to widen our engagement in this area. I think it's absolutely critical that we don't treat this as something we do on the side or something that's a branch of, but that this is, this is something that is integrated into our work, into our strategic decision making, into our financial planning and everything else beyond that. So my commitment as, as SG, if elected, would be con to continue the work the Sister Rashida is already doing to strengthen our engagement and roots with the, um, the British Black Muslim community, but also to make it part of who we already are as the MCB, not a, not a side project, not something tokenistic, but and also to include that representation in our leadership team as well, to make sure that the whole organization embodies that we are diverse, our communities are diverse, and we should reflect that too. Jazakallah for that. Same question to Ajmal. Sister Rashid, assalamu alaikum. Thank you very much for that, that amazing question. You know, when I go to Old Ken Road Mosque and I meet my brothers and sisters from Nigerian background, I feel very Nigerian, I tell you. It's like a call back to home. I've been to Nigeria and I enjoyed it thoroughly. When I go to our brothers and sisters programs from Sudani background, for example, or Ethiopian, Eritrean background, or North African background, or other parts of Africa, such as Gambia, Senegal, alhamdulillah, I've been very fortunate to have been engaging at the grassroots at the level where our communities are, meeting them, going to them, going to the mosques and community centers. One thing I learned, and that is the barriers that they face are awful. The discrimination that they face are terrible. And they've got double barrier and double discrimination, unfortunately. One is that they get the institutional one on the wider society. But unfortunately, some of the Muslim communities' racism towards the black community is also horrible. I will not mince my words. We will need to treat, treat our brothers and sisters Brilliant. equally. I entirely agree with Zara that this is not a side issue. It's not a tick box exercise. Our brothers and sisters of black background, African background, Asian, Chinese, any background, they're our brothers and sisters. And we need to change our culture. We need to treat them equally, bring them to the forefront, make sure that they have the same stake as we have on our organizations and work together so that we can break the barriers of, uh, you know, the institutional racism that we all face. So together we can overcome that a racial barrier that we have internally and externally and also deal with Islamophobia, inshallah. Jazakallah Ajmal for that. Um, okay, uh, Rashid, a question I have for you as somebody who uh, works within the MCB at the moment. Um, how happy are you with the level of diversity within the MCB? Um, right now, I think uh, MCB is making a lot of efforts. Uh, uh, we can absolutely do better. Um, the diversity uh, is not um, it's not too great, but it is um, relatively, uh, you know, better compared to what you have with uh, most, I would say, Muslim, uh, big Muslim organizations. Uh, the MCB is making a lot of conscious efforts. I would even say in the last two years, it's been quite uh, amazing to see the, the level of um, effort to ensure that diversity in terms of um, uh, rep uh, women, representation, uh, people of different backgrounds. Uh, in fact, I, I think um, the greatest achievement for me is that at the moment, uh, the, the, the office bearer at the MCB, are, you know, I think there are supposed to be seven of us. And of those seven, we have two black people, which I think it's really uh, a big thing for an organization like the NCB compared to uh, what we have. So, Rashid, so that it seems that so it seems that there there is definitely something we need to put high up on the on the uh, on the uh, exactly, list of exactly. to do items there's for a, one of for, for the. An effort. Wonderful, Rashid. Zakalaka for that. Lovely to speak to you. We're going to go on a short break, Thank but you. we'll see you in five. Uh, welcome back to our pre-MCB Hustings events, where we are putting questions to the two amazing and very able candidates vying for the position of Secretary General for the Muslim Council of Britain, Ajma Sur and Zahar Mohammed. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Okay, so I have a question for each of you, uh, and then we're going to go to a, another guest question. The question I have for you is, what do you think uh, is the greatest challenge, or maybe the challenges, 
for the Muslim community and perhaps the wider community at this present time that we need to overcome? Uh, oh, question to are. Zara. Okay. So, I mean, I think, look, we are still overcoming this pandemic. We've got the virus itself, COVID-19, and then we've got the post-recovery that's needed. I think MCB is going to have to continue to do a tremendous amount of work, working with our affiliates, working with wider society, and making sure that our community gets the support. We know mosques are struggling. We know people are suffering from mental health issues that they never suffered before. And as a community, not only do we need to recover, but we need to continue to take advantage of the opportunity that this pandemic has offered us, which is to work together in a way that we've never done before. And I think there is another issue that we can't lose sight of, which is the global global phenomenon of Islamophobia. You know, we've seen the things that have been happening in France and all over the world. Muslims are continuing to be on the back foot. The systemic and institutional racism and discrimination has continued. And I think MCB needs to continue its voice to challenge that and also to make sure that Muslims have the best opportunity and best representation available to them. Wonderful. Thank you so much for that, Zara. Same question to Ajmal. Thank you very much. I think the biggest uh, concern that I have is articulating Islam to the communities that we live with, non-Muslims and Muslims. We're losing our children in a large number who are not actually interested in Islam. They're not uh, really understanding their faith, becoming atheist or anything else for that matter. So presenting Islam is a major issue for both Muslims and non-Muslims. And we have lived in this country for a long time. MCB actually sits in the greatest and the most important position to be able to present Islam, not just to the UK population, but Europe as well as the globe. Secondly, is to do with unity amongst us. Within the Muslim community, I'd like to see more us together than us different because of our small uh, interpretations on fiqh. Um, this school of thought, you're this school of thought, we can't unite. I'd like to bring us together. What we are, what we have in common is far more than what divides us. According to the scholars, we only disagree on 5%, and therefore we have different schools of thoughts, which is wonderful. But the 95% we agree, we can come together. So MCB will become very powerful as an organization. And globally and locally, we have fought, I, I remember in the 80s, to make racism unfashionable when we were fighting pitch battle on the streets when a racist, racist thugs were attacking us. We need to really up our game when it comes to Islamophobia, locally and globally, with the media, with the government, with institutions, with public, saying, you know what, Islamophobia is not just not acceptable, is not fashionable, it should be outlawed. Mm -hmm. Any forms of bigotry should be outlawed. Those are some of the things that I'll be talking on, of course, and campaigning with the MCB team and our affiliates, inshallah. Jazakallah care for that, Ajmal. Appreciate that. Um, so just as a reminder to the, uh, to the viewers of Islam Channel, if you'd like to participate and ask your own questions, you can do that via Twitter, which is going to be at Islam Channel. So that's Twitter, which is going to be at, uh, 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 at Islam Channel, which is hashtag MCB Hustings, which is hashtag MCB Hustings. Um, so I'd like to go to our next guest caller. Uh, I'd like to introduce Sir Iqbal Sakrani OBE, who is no stranger to Islam Channel. He is a founding and first elected Secretary General of the MCB, and he served as a Secretary General for six years. Now, he has since served as a senior advisor to the MCB and serves on the boards of many national and international organizations. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brother Iqbal, how are you? Wa alaikum salam Alhamdulillah, I'm well. I hope you're all well too. Jazakallah. Yes, yes, we are. We're, we're, we're forging forward as best as we can. Uh, so lovely to have you with us uh, for this uh, pre Hustings event. I'd like you to direct your question to Ajwal Masur and then to Zara Muhammad. Thank you, Brother Sajid. First of all, thanks to Islam Channel and to yourselves for giving me this wonderful opportunity. Um, to ask a question to both the candidates, um, um, uh, which basically reflects on the work of the MCB. Now, alhamdulillah, both Brother Ajmal and Sister Zara have been involved with the MCB for some years. They, have, they are aware of the background and, uh, through its inception, the, the aims and objects of the organization. Now, bearing in mind that MCB consists of affiliates from all different backgrounds, both culturally and uh, ethnicity-wise, uh, and more important, school of thoughts. It's a fact that we do have members 
coming from all different um, uh, backgrounds, even with political affiliations as well. Now, bearing that in mind, how do you, uh, in your individual capacity, who presumably have your own background as well, in terms of your ethnicity, in terms of your culture, um, and alhamdulillah, in terms of even your political affiliation, how would you give comfort to the affiliates that your stance in taking this very important responsibility of a secretary general will actually represent all these diverse groups in the community? Uh, that's a question to Ajmal. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum. Brother Iqbal, how are you? Alhamdulillah, brother Alhamdulillah. Allah khair for the question. Um, of course, it is very important that we take people with us. We don't alienate people. We don't keep people behind and we don't create resentments and anger. The best way to do it is, of course, like we do already, which is to consult as widely as possible. And when I say consult as widely as possible, it isn't the um, typical, I would, you can say what you like, I'm going to listen to you for a few minutes, and then I'm going to go and do what I like. That's not my style of working. I've always worked with people from the grassroots. I've heard their concerns and views. I would argue my views, of course I, I will, but at once consensus has been reached, majority have come together and have decided on, a, on an issue, I will have the same as I have said earlier on. Once that has been reached, I will, of course, abide by and work with the majority decision. Second thing I will do is each and every member of our organization, the affiliates, they need to feel valued. There should be a place where they feel their voices are heard, their visions are realized, their dreams are coming true. And if I am the Secretary General, I will make sure that I'll value their contribution. I will bring them on board and try and work with them as much as possible. And the third thing we need to do, Brother Iqbal and everyone else who is listening to our conversation, is that we need to bring expertise on the table. A lot of us have lots of views and opinions, but if we're not experts, we may not be able to make as much contribution. So we need to bring experts around the table so that we can hear the expert voices. We need to find people who have got the skills, who have got the money to be able to deliver these projects. Put them together, listen to people, work with them, take them with you. Inshallah, that would be a recipe for a success and success together. Jazakallah khair for that, Arjun. Uh, same question to uh, Sister Zara. Yeah, assalamu alaikum, Dr. Sarek Well, and thank you so much for your question. I mean, I think what's really important is, you know, I've actually had experience leading a national umbrella organization. So I was the first female president of the Federation of Student Islamic Societies. And it was my mission to visit um, over 120 Islamic societies from Scotland. I took trains, planes, buses, and everything in between to meet. And I went as far as Exeter, Plymouth, Ireland, Wales, Manchester, you name it, I found a way there. And the reason I did it was I, I felt that as a truly representative organization, you have to meet and talk to people, you have to listen, you have to invite their diversity and difference. And as I traveled around, I found the impact of our work, because sometimes we sit in the ivory tower and think that what we're doing is actually meaningful and effective. But what we realize is the impact it's having on the ground is very different. And it's through that in feedback and engagement that we can actually transform our organizations to be truly representative, as well as build the future talent. Because when I went on my many adventures, I was able to develop future leaders that came into the organization and helped enrich the experience for everybody. And I think being part of MCB, that is something that I've continued to replicate, which is to meet our affiliates, to engage with them, to deliver webinars, bring together different affiliates on different platforms, hosting different conferences that I've been blessed to have the opportunity to do so. And just remembering that at the end of the day, our strength is in the people that we represent. So we have to listen to them. We have to have meaningful relationships. Zakalaka care for that, Zara. Uh, uh, Brother Iqbal, Zakalaka for your wonderful questions. Always love to have you with us. Uh, hope we get to speak to you again. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuhu. So we've got uh, questions coming uh, through on Twitter as well. Uh, question we have for both candidates are, will you commit to... As, uh, as the new Secretary General uh, to scrapping the prevent um, or counter extremism policies as set out by the government. Uh, Zara Mohammed. 
So yeah, I mean, the the prevent topic hits home and it hits hard because of the impact and consequences had on the Muslim community. And what the MCB currently has been doing, which I support, is a national listing exercise. We need a policy. The government's always going to have a counterterrorism policy, that standard. What we need to fight is the impact that it has on Muslim communities. And what we need to do that is make sure that we're listening to communities the way it's impacting and creating that national listing exercise to present back to government and the way you're doing it is an abuse of Muslims and it's not affecting our communities in a positive way. If anything, you're creating suspects and, victim, and, and marginalizing the minority as opposed to tackling this issue together. So for me, I think there's a lot, a lot more work to be done in this department. Sorry, just to clarify, you said it's a national listening exercise, but we're also talking about practical steps uh, to go to government and making sure that the, the voices of the community are heard uh, and heard very clearly. Absolutely. So we need to present the evidence back to government. We need a considered an approach. We cannot just say, let's scrap it, this is the end. We have to provide the evidence. This is the impact that your policy is having on people. Look at it, it's affecting schools, it's affecting employment, it's in healthcare, okay. uh, it's pervasive. Jazakallah uh, Same question to Ajmal. This is where I disagree with uh, Zara. I think this is where MCB should have done a lot more than it has done so far. It's been too, um, what's the word, soft on this Government has got away with murder. They have created a draconian policy, a policy that stinks, as far as I'm concerned, called prevent policy. I'm on record for going head to head with this government for not taking part or interested in their pre prevent agenda. I remember um, telling uh, several home secretaries as to why their policies don't work. And Zara is wrong in what she has just said. Many experts, parliamentarians, political parties, Lib Dems, Labour, Experts even within the Conservative Party, all of them have proposed scrapping of prevent agenda and uh, introducing something that is better. Bottoms up, not top down approach. Education programs should start from school. It should be at home, empowering families. It should not be spying against one another. So if I'm a secretary, if I'm elected as the secretary general of the MCB, inshallah, I will not be saying to the government, yes, sir, no, sir, how far do you want me to jump from, sir, on, on prevent? I'll certainly be challenging them. I'll be asking for the alternatives that are already out there to be explored. And I'd like MCB to listen to the voices of our community. I'd like MCB to realize that those people who have uh, told the government line haven't gone very far. And second thing I would like to say, which is very important, and that is, look, government needs to listen to me. I am a voter. Okay. I'm a taxpayer. Remember, Sajid, I stood for the parliamentary election twice. So I know our government and I know our parliamentary policies very, very well. And I believe MCB needs to provide a very robust leadership from the okay. front. It need, needs to be able to shake up the government and say, listen okay. to us. You can't exclude MCB from the yeah. conversation. Hold on. That's you good. cannot exclude MCB from the conversation. And if you're going to exclude MCB from the conversation, we are going to kick up a fuss. Okay, and I would we're provide we're that for, front line time. Leadership, no, that's, that's two very opposing views. I just uh, clarify that, you know, these are the views of the candidates and don't necessarily reflect the views of Islam Journal. But that's great. This is for the first time I feel we've had uh, real opposing views from the candidates. What I'd like to do now is go to another guest question. So we'd like to bring in Naomi Green from Northern Ireland, who works for the Belfast Islamic Centre and sits on the MCB National Council. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you? I'm fine, alhamdulillah. How are you? Very well, thank you. Lovely to have you with us. Good. Uh, would love you to thank uh, you. please pose your questions uh, to the candidates, please. Okay. So I come to you both. A um, very exciting debate. Um, I would like to ask the candidates about their commitment to regional inclusion. Northern Ireland is one of the least ethnically diverse parts of the UK. Muslims here often face Islamophobia and racism, including verbal assaults, attacks on homes, and most recently, an arson attack on BMCA, a Muslim-owned community centre, on Thursday night. Muslims in Northern Ireland have no local political representation. Being part of a national organisation is vitally important for us. How will you ensure that MCB continues to give voice to regional communities who are often isolated and to support them? Thank That's, you. That is a great question, Omi, and uh, thank you so much for that. And so uh, sorry thank to you. hear about uh, the difficulties that our community is facing at the moment. Um, so I'd like Thank to uh, direct that question to Zara Mohammed. 
Yeah, no, thank you so much, Naomi. And again, really, really distressing to hear. I mean, I come from I come from Scotland. I come from a region, and it's been my um, intention in MCB to make it very clear that we have to include regions, and that's what we've done with our work in COVID. And that's my commitment as SG is that we need regional organisations, regional regional umbrella umbrella bodies at the table, part of the decision making, because as a community as and as an organisation, we can't just develop on our own. We have to take every Everybody else with us. There's learning and there has been generations of work that's been done by our seniors and by so many different activists within our community. Why can't we share that learning across the board? So I think for me, a strong MCB is one where regions are at the table, part of the decision making and fully represented. So I'm, I'm so grateful to hear your Irish voice, Naomi. And I think my Scottish voice will add um, much more to that as well. So we can continue to bring in that culture and diversity together, inshallah. Wonderful. Jazakallah for that, Zara. Same question to Ajmal. And immediately, uh, firstly, Assalamu alaikum, Sister Naomi. Thank you very much for joining us. And I'm also equally very distressed to hear what's going on. And I've, I get emails and messages as an imam regularly from people who are suffering very difficult circumstances with families being threatened. Uh, so, subhanallah. We pray and we do everything we can. If I become the Secretary General of Muslim Council of Britain, one of the first thing I would like to do is to set up a task force um, uh, to actually look into Northern Ireland situation and try and bring to us, all of us, onto our uh, knowledge base more um, information, how to go about doing things, consulting at the grassroots level, as well as finding a way of lobbying our uh, Northern Ireland government and any other political parties that we have. So creating a partnership, listening to the local and the grassroots and having a specific task force looking at Northern Ireland would be very important. Regionally, across the board in the UK, I'm a believer of unity. I believe Scotland, Ireland, Wales, England, we belong to one United Kingdom. And our representation are based on our devolution of power. When we have local people powerful, we become powerful centrally. I will do things differently when it comes to Muslim Council of Britain's work. I'd like to have some of our MCB meetings in those regions so those local people can join in our programs. I'd like to have some policy forum taking place within those regions so that regional people can have a say. I'd like to see more regional activities. One of the greatest work that I've seen and I've also been party to and I've given speeches on is the Open My Mosque event. Alhamdulillah, it's been very localized, very regionalized and it's been done very well. Okay. More of that, but more powerfully, politically as well as socially. Okay, I just want to like that for that. Um, Again, thank you so much, Sister, for that wonderful question as well. Uh, we'd like to take another question from Twitter. Uh, we have a question which, which um, from Hassan Batana, who says, uh, this is a question for both candidates, if the government chooses not to engage with or work with the MCB, what is your strategy? Is it to try and get them to um, work with the MCB, or would you see that as some badge of honour, that they are not wanting to engage? Uh, question to uh, Ajmal. So this is to do with the government not wanting to engage with yes, us, correct. with the MCB. I, I think government is completely misguided when it comes to not wanting to engage with the MCB. There are advisors who have advised them that MCB has been hijacked by Muslim Brotherhood, jamaat e islami Ikhwanis, this, that and the other, and you should not touch them with a the barge pole. I'd like to go and challenge those policy advisors and, and say, MCB is the largest, most democratic, most transparent Muslim organization we have in the country, in Britain. If you don't engage with the Muslim Council of Britain, actually you're missing out and you're losing. Okay. I'm not here with a begging bowl. Okay. I'm not here with a begging bowl to ask you to consult or engage me. I have every right to be engaged. And okay. I will, inshallah, I We've got to ask the same question of, uh, of Zara. That's, that's a good response there. Uh, we just want to hear from Zara now on that too, please. Okay, no, thank you. I mean, the work we've been doing in COVID, we have had recognition from our Ramadan guidance to our guidance to mosques from all across society, including members of parliament and government ministers themselves acknowledging the work that we're doing. As MCB, our priority has been affiliates first. We won't compromise our values. We won't compromise our principles. We will make sure that the affiliates are our priority. We welcome government engagement. You know, we are doing that work on the ground. We're benefiting our communities and that represents and strengthen that is very visible to all. So we completely welcome the engagement. It's disappointing that the government has chosen the approach it has, but ultimately that, has, that engagement will be based on 
prioritizing our values and principles first, and it will not be conditional to anything else beyond that. Okay, Jazakallah for that. I have um, two further questions. So my next, I have one question, then the final question is I really want you to summarize within less than a minute of why you feel you are the right choice for the role of Secretary General. The question I have for you, which kind of treads on the, the, the feedback that we're getting and the questions that we're getting, is that there is um, a phrase or a metaphor just called rocking the boat. Now, how far will your desire to kind of, your, your des to the desire to reconcile kind of speaking the truth and defending the community, how do you reconcile that over kind of the potential to rock the boat or perhaps it's say those things which may be displeasing to the government? What's your, what, what's your view? Question to Ajmal on that. Please keep it short. Allah says in the Quran and speak and invite people with wisdom and clarity and good examples. That's what I'm going to do. Wisdom is to say the right thing at the right time, at the right place, at the right tone. Not being shy when we don't need to be shy. Being confident where we need to be confident. Being kind and compassionate when we need to be compassionate. And being pre and be prepared to compromise where compromise is possible. We need to know our game well. And I believe we need to create our own narrative. We need to create our own agenda. And we need to listen to our affiliates and drive our agenda and our narrative confidently, robustly, wisely, and smartly. Jazakallah like for that same question to Zara. I mean, I think the beauty of the work we do is it's based on Shura. It's based on teamwork, team building, mm -hmm. and it's about inviting others into the decision-making table. You know, as Muslims, we have a duty to speak the truth, to challenge wrongdoing, but we also have to do it together as a collective with a wise voice, but also one that's informed and considered. You know, being the SG of MCB, it has consequences. Whatever action you take, whatever word you say, whatever decision you make, people are watching and that ripple effect has a consequence. That's why all of these positions have such a heavy amana, because you're not just responsible for you. It's not me, Zara but it's the organization you represent and the communities beyond that. So anything that we do should be informed by that first and should be met, we should be considered and should be thought through with our teams in mind. Jazakallah like cover that, Zara. Now I'm gonna give you both a minute each and I will be timing you. So Ajmal, pay attention. Uh, so the question I have for the both of you is that, what is it, why should people vote for you? Why are you right for the role of Secretary General of the MCB? And what would you try and achieve within the first maybe six to 12 months in order to really get the ball moving and make some, you know, real large steps forward uh, for the MCB? Um, Ajmal. Thank you very much, Sajid. I will be uh, within the time frame. MCB, if I'm uh, elected as the Secretary General, I'd like to have MCB with a lot stronger voice as well as representation of Muslim communities across the board. Number two, I'd like to put the uh, invest, invest in the younger people more, inshallah. Number three, build Muslim, uh, confident Muslim families. Uh, number four, take Muslim, uh, Muslim Council of Britain to the grassroots. Number five, foster better relationship with the media. Number six, encourage greater Muslim participation in civil, civic as well as political arenas. Number seven, eradicate all forms of inequality, discrimination, racism, and Islamophobia. Number eight, promote better cooperation between Muslim communities and, of course, the society at large. And um, number number nine, help create a more inclusive and more common good uh, MCB. And number ten, make M Muslim Council of Britain more financially stable. What will I achieve and I would like to achieve within the first 12 months is to be able to increase our membership within the first two years to be able to double our membership, inshallah, and make MCB more sustainable, more representative and more powerful, inshallah. Brilliant. Right on the dot of one minute. Uh, Zara, same question, please. Yeah, I mean, I think we have to ask ourselves, what is this election really about? Every leader has a context and we have to look at the context that we're in now. We're dealing with an unprecedented time with the challenge before us. I've already been part of the leadership team doing the work, delivering on the ground. And I think what we need now is to build on the foundations of the excellent work MCB is already doing. We need to further engage, not just within, but also to build alliances with civil society. We need to be seen as an organization and as communities that don't just benefit Muslims, but benefit non-Muslims too. We need to be a symbol of hope and of confidence. We need to continue to empower each other, as well as the work, the, the campaigns and many other aspects that we need to do. And finally, we need to excel 
as a nomad, as individuals, why doesn't the non-Muslim community look to us for these solutions? Why don't we be seen as actually the Muslim community are doing a fantastic job right now, not just in being good, but in being leaders that we also want to follow. So I think right now is a time for hope, but also okay. for inspiration. Jazakallah Kazara, it was all well done, sticking to that one minute. Uh, I'd like to th thank all of my guests tonight, and of course, uh, the wonderful candidates as well. I hope that this uh, the show has helped the public get a, a better idea of who uh, they're gonna, who is uh, going to be better for the MCB, inshallah. You can watch uh, the show again on islamchannel.tv. And for more information, go to uh, mcb.org.uk uh, for further information about the hustings as well. We make dua Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses the hustings, inshallah, and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses the individual who's going to be the best for the community, inshallah, and uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, um, inshallah, keep us on the good path on the Sarat al-Mustaqim. To everyone, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, and good night.